Welcome to This Week in Virginia, and it's a genuine delight to welcome back Diane Seaborn, who was on the show December of last year. Diane is the manager of the information services in DLAS, the Division of Legislative Automated Systems. Uh, been working in DLAS, with DLAS since 1992 and was part of the effort in the pioneering time when all of a sudden the system went online in 1994. So Diane, we thank you for everything you do. Uh, many of the people who will be seeing this show have been in your training sessions, but many others will be getting a, a brief session this way and and we, so let me just be quiet and let you start talking and telling telling us about the upcoming session and what's available to help people in keeping track of of the legislation. Yes. Hi, David. Thank you for having me back. Um, we're here again to talk about the legislative information system, our online um, bill storage and bill tracking system for the legislature, the, um, the General Assembly of Virginia. And so. Uh, yeah, so as you mentioned, we're getting ready to jump into the 2022 session. So in, so in the Virginia General Assembly, the sessions run in two-year cycles, and the even year is the first year of the uh, two-year session cycle. So, we're, so if, you are, if folks out there are brand new to tracking legislation, it's a good time to jump in and learn about it because we're starting off this year with House Bill 1 and Senate Bill 1. So you start off from, from scratch with this session. Now, but what we do is that you know, we'll introduce a lot of bills into the session. And then when the session ends, um, which um, you know, I'm gonna share my screen in just a second, um, in the odd year, we pick up where we left off. So that's how the two year session cycles work. But so I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and start sharing my screen on the screen. So to get to the screen, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the web address is lis.virginia.gov. And so you just type, type that in and you'll come to the 2022 session homepage. And so um, now this session will begin on January 12th and it will run for 60 days and it will, and it ends, it should end on March 12th. Now that's the 60 day period. So, um, but to, if you're brand new to navigation, you really just wanna go look at what bills have been introduced so far. You can start by clicking on the, this bills and resolutions link up here on the top of the screen. So click on bills and resolutions. And then on this list, we have view, view bills by category. We have all kinds of categories of bills. We have the all legislation link, bills by members, bills by committees. But often people tell me they do like the by day listing on yes. bills. So that's can, very, um, that's very helpful. Very helpful. Yeah. Yes. And so, um, but, but, for this session, this 2022 session, we began pre-filing legislation just this week on November 15th. And so it's a great, and again, it's a great time to start because there have been so few bills introduced so far. So if you click, but as we introduce bills, the, the days will um, show up on the screen, but I'll just go back and click on November 15th. And you can see on that day, two Senate bills were introduced. So we just have two bills that are now have been introduced in the system. And so, um, but so you might think to yourself, well, you can see these two bills. And so here's Senate Bill 2, for example, it has to do with school principals um, incident reports. And let's say you decide, well, I do want to see if any more bills come up about principals in, in this upcoming session. So we also have a bill tracking tool called Lobbyist in a Box, where you can store bills and get emails about um, the bills as they change. So I'm going to show you that real quickly. So just to jump right into that, you click on the lobbyist in a box um, link and you get to the screen and to sign up, you do have to register for a user ID. You click on the lobbyist in a box guide right here, click this link. And then um, we have two different kinds of tracking with this tool. There's a free service um, where you can just log in and um, track up to five bills and get email notifications from the system. But you can also subscribe to the system. If you decide you wanna track a, a lot you know, more bills than just five, you have the subscription system. And now for state agencies, it costs $400 to subscribe to the service. And for other users, it costs $600 a year to, to subscribe. 
but the free service works wonderfully. Um, I recommend people just go ahead and try it out by clicking on this free registration link. And when you click that, you just type in a desired login name and password and then register and you'll get an email back and you'll be ready to go to start tracking legislation. So I'm going to just click on click my back browser but button back to, to the screen here where you log in and I'm going to go ahead and just log in. Now, when you register, you'll get an email back that's that verifies um, that you that it accepted your registration and then you, um, you just click a link in that email to go ahead and log in. So when you first log in, what we have, we have, as a free user, you can create one profile in the system. And so just get started where it says create a new profile for, click on build tracking and email notification. And you click that link and it opens this screen where, you, where you'll store the bills that you're tracking. Now I mentioned um, set a bill two. So for example, uh, right here on the left hand side of the screen, it says put bills in this profile. Well, let's say I want to track Senate Bill 2. That was about school principals. So I type in, I can right here in this box where it says put these specific bills in my profile. Since I know my bill number, I can go ahead and just type in SB2 and hit add. And now that bill is added to this profile. Now, um, real quickly, though, I'm going to go back up here on the top of the screen. It says profile list. So I'm going to click back on that list and right here, this is back to that home page that I logged into and I created that profile. So now you can see it. My profile is listed here on the screen. This is that my profile that I'm going to use to store and track bills. I, now I mentioned again about the free, the free user, free users can only create that one profile and store five bills in them. But if you do subscribe to the system, when you're on this screen, you can create a hundred profiles and put 300 bills in each profile. So that's the difference between being a free user and, and or a subscriber to the system. But I want to go back in and manage this profile that I've created. So I'll click on the link to my profile again. And now you, you can still see I have Senate Bill 2 in this profile. But as I mentioned, we have an only two bills have been introduced into the, into the session so far. And if you want to be notified when any more bills are introduced, let's say that contain the word principal. You want to just know about any bills that might have to do um, with principals, school principals to be specific. But um, we have different ways of being notified about bills. Notify me when any bills are just simply introduced or offered by a patron, a member, you know, a House or Senate member, or referred to a certain committee, or offered with a phrase. Now, in this, for this particular profile, I want to just check on bills that might have to do with um, school principals. So I'm going to use the phrase option for this profile. So I'm going to go ahead and click on offered with a phrase. And I'm going to type in the word principal. And I'll hit search. And so far, it's, so this, what this is doing is just searching through the bill text that we have on LIS for the 2022 session so far. And of course, it only found the one bill, Senate Bill 2, that we have on the system. Now, it even shows it, but it shows an asterisk beside this bill number right here because I've already stored Senate Bill 2 in, in this profile. But I want to be notified about future bills that are introduced with this term, with this word. But um, so... Right here, it says put search phrase on email notification list. So I'm going to click this box and select submit and return. And now you can see that it says notify me when any bills are offered with the phrase principal. Yeah, so quick, now quick, question, quick question, quick question, Diane. Yes. Particularly mm -hmm. for those who will be using the free service, they can only track five bills. But there's, I don't think there's a limit, is there, to the number of bills that, that can pop up that have the word principal, but they just can't select more than five to track. Is that the, is that the rule? Absolutely. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's the beauty of the system where you can get email notifications. 
you know, you're as a free user, you're limited to those five bills. But let's say, um, you know, as the bills start coming in, you you add five to your profile, and those emails you get are interactive. You'll get an email from our system. You log in, and it will tell you the following bills um, for your profile contain the term principal. And you'll read through the bills, and you choose if you want to add them into this profile or not. So let's say you add five, but then you start and continue to get emails. Well, what you could do is, uh, you, and you still want to track those bills, is to create a spreadsheet and, and store these extra bills in a spreadsheet and watch the bills, go to the legislative information system. And I'm gonna to talk to you in just a minute about how to go read the bills and watch them as they go through their life cycle. And then if a bill dies, for example, if it fails in committee, you can come log back in and remove a bill from your profile with this right. box right here and delete the, delete the bill and then add more bills into this, back into this profile. But, um, but to get all these emails, which are key, that's what the beauty of the system is, is to be able to get these emails. You have to go down here where it says notify me at email address. You want to be sure to put in your email address right here. So you go ahead and type that in and hit update. And then uh, so that way, so what you're covered right now, where it says notify me when any bills are offered with the phrase principal, and now I've put in my email address. So from now on, when any bills contain that word, I'm going to get an email from the system on that simple term. But I have also stored bills into the profile, Senate Bill 2, and I'm going to store other bills into the profile. So right here where it says notify me when my bills um, have any status change. You, you want to know when Senate Bill 2 is referred to committee or reported out of committee or the different things that happen to it and the other bills that you store. So you want to be sure right here where it says have any status change, you want to click that word so that it says enabled. So you'll get the email alerts as well about the bills that you've stored in your profile. Now, we do have these other options here to, you know, Notify me when my bills appear on a docket or have a new text version or have what we call fiscal impact statements. But um, if you select status change, that's all you need to do. You're covered. You're going to get alerts about every single thing that happens to your particular bill. Some people want to just turn that off and only be notified when a bill appears on a, on a Senate docket or on a House agenda. But uh, but for most of us, the status change is what what you want to select for your profile. Right. Now, so this is a, just a quick overview of how to go into lobbies in a box, how to store a couple bills, how to set up your email notification. But but it is a, it's a lot to take in as our new user. So I do want to mention I'm going to go back out to LAS home. And so I do want to mention that for this system and for lobbies in a box, we do have training that we offer. And so uh, during the month of December, where I'm going to be, and it's, I do run the training sessions, and this year they're, they're going to be virtual again. We started the virtual training last year when, because of the pandemic, but we're going to do that again this year too. It worked out well. Um, so to, to learn about when those training sessions are, you click right here on meetings, right here on the homepage. You click on meetings, and you can look down to December. So I'm going to scroll down here to December. And you can see that we have, um, beginning December 8th, we have links to the training sessions and to the registration for those training sessions. So I encourage anyone, it's free. And so if anyone wants to you know, learn more about the system, the new user system, are, is new user training is for those who have never used LIS or Lobby in a Box and want to, and, and, and want to learn a little bit more about the general assembly process as well. I kind of cover how the how the session runs. Um, now we do no, have. No, it's Diane. Diane, I just want to emphasize that it's, it's so great that you're doing this virtual because back in the pre-pandemic days, there often would be a limit to the number of people that could be in the room for the for the training, and so someone would try to sign up and say, "Oh, that date's already filled up." Uh, with the virtual training, I guess there is no limit to the number of people who could be on on December 8th. Well, there is actually what I have done is I, I have capped the number of participants. Well, I've tried to, depending on um, how many we have sign up, I can expand it. I, but the only reason I've done that is because I want to encourage people to ask questions. 
I feel like if I make the virtual training too large that they, they won't stop me and ask questions if, and the smaller oh, the good groups, point. yeah, they, they do that, but I am, but because it's virtual and, um, I can make more sessions. So that's what I'm going to, that's what I plan to do. So, um, so we have about 10 sessions out there. So, oops, I'm going to roll back down. So we have the new user sessions. Um, but I also do want to mention, we, we do what we call review user sessions as well. So right here, it says review, but I do want to point out that's for users who have, who are more familiar with the legislative process. For those folks who have no LIS, have navigated the system for a year or two, and actually have maybe used lobbyists in a box before, um, those are a shorter session. They're just 45 minutes, just kind of an overview of what to expect for the upcoming session. Now, at the bottom of that screen, do you have some that go into January? Um, I do. I do. So, um, yeah, so we do it throughout the month of December, and then they do go into January. I feel like that we do a last minute right before session. Again, session begins on January 12th. I find that people hear about it and they and I want they like to have those sessions into January. So we do have them into January. And and again, I'll if we have to, I'll try to squeeze in more sessions if we need them. But this is what we have on the schedule so far. So that's great. Yep. So uh, so now on this meetings page, though, I do want to mention it's a it's very informative too. During session, committees meet, and you go to this meetings page to find out when committees are meeting. Um, but and so, for example, right here on December sixteenth, the uh, House Appropriations Committee and the Senate Finance Committees are going to meet to to introduce. Um, they're going to meet, and then oh, well, actually, they meet because that's also the day that the governor will introduce the budget. Uh, so there's two different things. They meet, but then the governor will introduce the budget during those meetings. And so uh, that's a really important time. Of course, the state budget gets introduced. The state budget um, is, a, is a bill, just like all the other bills that go into the system, but it's very large. And so I just want to segue real quick. If on the budget, if you go to LAS Home, we do have a link here to the state budget. The, the budget is so large and so unique it has its own dedicated portal. So you click on the state budget link and, and on the 16th, this, this link right here will change to the 2022 uh, budget link. We, we cannot show the link for the budget for the 2022 session until it's introduced by the governor on the 16th. So I just wanna mention that's why you, you don't see that here just yet. So, but on the 16th, look to the state budget portal now, now we have we have a link for the bill. We have links to what we call budget amendments. All bills get introduced into our system, and they go to committee. And often they are amended by the committees, uh, and the budget does as well. But uh, the budget will have many, many more amendments than a typical bill. So we have that's why we have this split out here to show you all these different amendments that get submitted by members um, for the budget. They're under this link here. So. Now, uh, the budget is a really complicated process, so I don't really wanna go into that much more during this brief session, but I just wanna remind everybody to take a look for that come on December 16th. So, so now I'll go back to LIS Home. Now, to navigate through LIS, you always look up to the top for links to get back to, to your home page. So I'm gonna click up here on LIS Home. And so, uh, so now that was um, the state budget. So. Last year, during the pandemic, of course, the, the um, House and Senate sessions were virtual, so all the committee meetings were virtual. You know, I mentioned that committee meeting uh, where the state budget is going to be introduced, and so and that will be held in person here on the 16th of December, but you can also click to the, these video links that are on the LAS homepage to view these meetings. So you have the option this year of either attending in person or attending virtually. So um, so you just click these links. And so right now, of course, when you click these links, right, you can see archive meetings, but when new meetings pop up, you can go ahead and uh, there'll be a link to view the meeting. So, so, I, so you can do either this year. That's what I'm hearing from the House and Senate that they hope to be able to live stream all the meetings, but of course you can attend in person as well. But, uh, and so then that's important too, because when you track bills in the um, lobbyist in a box system, you know, you, you might want to attend these meetings, like say, you know, I mentioned Senate Bill 2, 
and uh, you're, you're, or you get alerts about when that bill is placed on a House agenda or a, a Senate docket, that means that those bills are going to be taken up by those committees. So you might want to um, attend the meeting where that bill is being discussed. Now, what I might do is go ahead and show you how to navigate a bill. So now we've talked about the 2022 session, but you, if you wanna go to other sessions, you can click over here on the other sessions link. And um, you mentioned at the beginning of the show that this system was um, started back in 1994. So we do have all the bills that have been introduced into the sessions back to 1994. So if you need to go look at some old bill from a different session, you just go to this other sessions link. Um, and so just one thing I wanna mention on statistics for, led, for the General Assembly sessions. On average, we introduce about 2,000 bills into the system, and, and then on average, about 800 pass every year. So, so there are a lot of, and so all of these session links contain every all of those 2,000 measures that are that are introduced, whether they pass or fail. But so if I go ahead though and click on the 2020 session, just as an example, I'm going to go back to the now. Do you see how I clicked on 2020? but the screen looks just the same way it did for the 2022 session. So you wanna be sure that you just, you notice which session you're, you're in as you're navigating through the system. Right. Um, because it, it, they all do look the same. But so here I am in the 2020 session and I'm gonna again, click on the bills and resolutions link. And remember earlier, I showed you the by day listing to look at the, you know, now, now here's the 2020 session. You'll see how the by day listing changes when we start introducing bills. Back in 2020, we started introducing bills on November 18th, and these show all the different days that we put bills into the system. So that's why you can just kind of spot check on, and see, and like see on January 3rd, a lot of bills went into the system back in 2020. But, but if you're navigating any session year and you wanna just look up a bill, if you have a bill number and you just wanna um, pull it up on the system, we have a search by bill number box right here where I can type in HB1 and hit enter. And so I've hit pulled up a bill. So all 2000 bills or so that get introduced into the system have their own dedicated bill history page. That's what this is right here. So this particular bill was um, about absentee voting. So we show you this, the, you know, the, what we call a catchphrase about what the bill's about. Then you see the patron, the delegate or senator who introduces the bill. Now, again, we have House bills that get introduced and Senate bills that get introduced. And, um, and then and they, you know, we have delegates in the House of, House of Delegates and senators in the Senate who are the, who are the patrons of this legislation. Um, but so then we have the summary of the bill. It's a short description um, about what this bill is trying to do. But then we get into what we call the full text of the bill. Um, so I'll go ahead and click on this link. So this bill is introduced, it says pre-filed. That's what we have right now, bills that are being introduced before session begins. Um, and so what happens with this is that, you know we have a staff of attorneys here at the General Assembly that are here to help the, the members draft their legislation. A member will go approach them with an idea and. Um, but it's all based on current code of Virginia law. So when they introduce a bill, the, the, that attorney has to pull up the existing code sections and then make the changes that the member is proposing in, in this legislation. So, so, it's, so every, every bill starts off with what, we, what the existing law is. But so if you open the full text of any introduced bill and you wanna see the proposed changes for the code of Virginia. On this screen right here, all you have to do is click this highlight feature. I clicked highlight and you'll see as you scroll down in the text, you'll start seeing notations of this is in red and it's marked through. That means they're, they're proposing to strike this language and I'll scroll down a little bit further. And then, and then you'll see items that are highlighted in yellow. Those are, that's proposed new language for the, these particular code sections. So this highlight feature helps you get a quick overview of what's, what they are trying to change with this piece of legislation. So that's, that's the highlight feature of the full text. So I'm gonna go ahead and navigate back out to the front page of this bill. 
So I showed you the introduced bill, the introduced text, but then the bill, if we go down here into this history section of the bill, you'll see that this bill is um, pre-filed and ordered printed, it's introduced, and then it's referred to committee. And so, and then um, in the House, they use subcommittees a lot. So a lot of the bills are reviewed. The subcommittee is just a subset of members. You know, so a full committee might have 20 members in it, but then they create subcommittees of about say seven to eight members. It's just a way for the legislation with all these numbers of bills to be handled more quickly when they can, can move them into subcommittees for a review. So the subcommittee reviewed this bill and recommended reporting it with a substitute. So that means they rewrote it. Um, they you know, have a new version of this bill. And then the bill went back to the full committee and then the full committee did report it with a substitute. So now I wanna show you, I'm showing you this because I wanna mention here's that substitute. Whenever any new version of a bill is posted, it, it, it has to, that text is also posted along with it up here. And so one other thing I wanna mention is I talked to you about lobbyists in a box, the bill tracking tool. And so when you ask for those status changes on those, on those bills, these are the status changes. When a bill has a new version, you'd get an email, Senate bill, hey, you're tracking Senate bill two, it has a new version, you know, take the, you know, in the email notification, I would say open the link here and we'll, we'll show you those, those changes. Um, uh, I mean, all those different status changes, when it's reported out of committee, as I mentioned, when it has a new version, um, when it went to the committee and it was placed on a, an agenda in the house, you would get an email notification. That's a status change. When So um, now again, another thing about tracking the bills, sometimes if you're tracking a bill, you might wanna attend those committee meetings. Um, and uh, so I'll talk to you in just a second about that too, but by getting that alert about the status change of when a bill is placed on an agenda, you'll know, hey, maybe I need to, to log in and go and see that meeting or attend that meeting. So, but, so anyway, this bill is reported with a substitute and um, it, we just go, you can go back down here through the history of the bill. And then ultimately it was passed the house. Now this house bill then moves on to the Senate. So now it's it's gone to the Senate and it's re, it's referred to a committee in the Senate um, and then it re, was reported out of the Senate committee with an amendment. So now it's on the it heads to the Senate floor. And it, so it basically the bill is going through the same process. This House bill is now going through the same process it went through um, in the House and it's going in the Senate. So so <laughs> nonetheless, um, it the bill moves along and it, it passes the Senate. And then it's enrolled and sent to the governor. Now, in this case, the governor simply approved the bill. It says approved by governor chapter 1149. Well, when that chapter text is posted, it is shown up again up here under text versions. So I'll click that text version of chapter text. And you can see that's this is the final version of the text. And it shows you where the information was stricken. Um, in that final chapter text. So I'll go ahead and hit that highlight option too again, and you'll see these are the final changes that happened to this bill text. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a, the general overview of the history of a particular bill. Now, bills can um, have different versions of, of their life cycles of lots of times they might go to committee and they'll be left in committee. That means they've just failed. But um, this is a bill as it goes from introduction to final chaptering. Um, and now these changes that occur to that end up in our code of Virginia, as I mentioned earlier. So we do have a link over here on the legislative information system to the code of Virginia as well, in case you wanna just go look at that code. So, so if I click back on this chapter text, and if I click on the section link, it will open the, that Code of Virginia section on our site. So that's kind of an overview of you know, what, how session will go. Do you have any questions for me, Dave? Well, I, I tell you, that's very, very thorough. And I think that people who sign up for your sessions uh, will have a chance to ask their questions and, and get them answered. And I would just really encourage people um, if they're going to be tracking more than one bill, 
to go ahead and sign up and, and go to one of those virtual training sessions and, and get more information and be able to, to raise their hands uh, electronically or however you do it and a ask questions. So I think that that would be, uh, uh, we're encouraging people to do that because it will really help citizens be involved in the whole process. Yes, I hope they do attend. And we're looking forward to, we have a lot of changes this year with 17 new house members uh, in, coming in. It's gonna be a, a, a very exciting year. Again, I want to thank Diane Seaborn, the Information Services Manager of DLAS, the Division of Legislative Automated Systems. Thank you again so much for being on This Week in Virginia. Thank you.